Hey guys, Nurse Cat. Let's talk in our ICU crash course about um, ET tube and ventilator patient care. So complications of invasive ventilation include vent-associated pneumonia. You can prevent this by keeping the head of bed slightly elevated when possible, using closed inline suctioning like the Ballard, providing great mouth care, um, including the posterior oropharynx often. I've actually seen people die from a film of mucus at the back of, the, of their posterior oropharynx, so that is often neglected. Reposition the patient at least every two hours and assist the respiratory therapist in repositioning the ETT, the endotracheal tube, within the holder to prevent breakdown of the patient's mouth and lips. Catheter-related infections are common in the ventilated and critically ill client. Observe policy for sterile procedures and daily care. Consider when any invasive line is no longer needed and can be removed. Patients who are ventilated are at higher risk for GI bleed. Give enteral nutrition within 48 hours of admission when possible, and any hospitalized client should probably be considered for a histamine 2 blocker or a proton pump inhibitor. This is for anyone who's on a ventilator with acute renal failure, liver disease, or comorbidities. In the hospital, their bodies are under stress and they're at risk for stress ulcers and GI bleeds. And delirium. Ventilated patients are often at very high risk for delirium. And there's lots of great resources out there that tell you things that you can do um, to help them differentiate day from night, for example. But the primary thing that you can do as a bedside nurse is speak to your patient just as you would somebody who is able to respond to you.